Audi Q3, nice car, right? But here's an interesting story about it. So it was first launched around 2011 or 12 in uh, UK for uh, around 25,000 pounds and it did not sell much. So what Audi did was it relaunched the car in 2014 with a little different front grille, a little updated headlights and this time it launched it at 45,000 pounds and now it sold a lot. Interesting, right? Let's find out why. Hey, it's Arnav, it's 60 time and we're talking about economics. So if you have been an economics student, then you can pretty much skip this section or even the video because this is all basic economics. But if you haven't, then um, let's get into this. So there's something called the basic law of demand in economics, which says that if the price of things are increased, then less people will buy it or people will buy less of it. And if the prices decrease, then uh, more people uh, will buy it or people will buy more of it, which of course makes sense, right? You know, if something becomes cheaper, you buy more of it. And if something becomes costlier, you can't buy uh, more of it. And all of this uh, is mathematically represented as something called the price elasticity of demand or in general in economics when we say elasticity there are a lot of elasticities but the common word elasticity basically means the price elasticity of demand which means that the how much uh, change in uh, quantity of that good being sold is uh, a result of how much change in its price now for most goods what happens is the, the elasticity is negative negative being um, so that if you uh, have a positive change in price that is if the price increases maybe say by 10 percent then uh, the quantity of it being sold will reduce uh, let's say if, re if it reduces by 10 percent itself then you have an elasticity of minus one okay but there are some goods which interestingly have a positive elasticity which means if you increase their price more of it is sold and if you decrease their price then less of it is sold now goods which are uh, you know not following the law of demand and they have a positive elasticity they are not called ordinary goods because of course they are not ordinary right so you find such kind of goods on two very extreme ends of the spectrum of goods Okay. that is goods which are considered really inferior or goods which are considered really superior and luxury they don't follow the law of demand um, and it's surprising so let's find out why about either of the two sides now what happened with uh, the Audi for example is that uh, in the price range of around 20,000 pounds it's possible to buy uh, some of the more ordinary cars like a Toyota or a Mazda or a Volkswagen and Audis usually sell from a price range of 40,000 and above so the people who would buy an Audi wouldn't buy an Audi if it was so cheap that they would feel that buying it does not showcase their ability to buy an Audi. And the people who are happy buying Toyotas, Mazdas and Volkswagens, they don't want to go 5,000 pounds above what their average price of similar cars are and buy a car for 25,000 when they are happy buying uh, the kind of car that they want at 20,000 pounds. And that places this car at a very peculiar place where it's a great car from a luxury car manufacturer priced really low compared to other cars, but it's not selling because it really does not sell because it takes you from A to B. It sells because it's an Audi. When it was priced at 45,000, then it brings back the luxurious feeling. So people are going to be buying it because they can show that they own an Audi. Now, that's what differentiates Veblen goods from other goods. Now, with Veblen goods, what happens is that people uh, buy Veblen goods to show that they are able to afford a Veblen good. And as a result, uh, with Veblen goods, the price elasticity of demand is positive, which means that if you increase the price, more people buy it. And this is a psychological, this is a mass economy effect, right? Uh, this is macroeconomics we're talking about. This is not uh, how one person's purchasing uh, decision is defined. So this is, we are studying how the economy of an entire country or how the economy of the world works. So this is basically a psychological effect that there are things which get perceived as luxury. And uh, a lot of times there are brands and companies which actually rely on this effect. Um, for example, there used to be an app uh, which I think has been 
removed from both Android as well as Apple App Store, but it used to be an app which was priced at 999 US dollars, which was probably the highest price that you can set of an app. And uh, the name of the app, I think, was I Am Rich. So the app was the app did not do anything. If you open the app, the first screen it would just say I am rich. So this the app uh, was there only to attract rich people to buy it because they can show that you know they can afford an app for one thousand dollars. There are a lot of other uh, you know goods, and you know of course what I'm talking about that there are uh, certain goods which uh, do not exactly. Uh, uh, they are not actually bought because of the utility that they serve, but just because people want others to know that, you know, they can buy a good that's that costly. Roughly, there are three factors that uh, contribute to Webland goods. Uh, one is the snob effect. The snob effect is what we just discussed. People want to show off uh, that they can buy something costly. The second thing is uh, known as the common law of business balance, which uh, kind of drives a feeling into our brains is that if a uh, price of something is reduced, it might be, uh, you know, something that's cheap is not going to be of good quality and something that's uh, pricier can be of a better quality. And that is something that even at uh, coding blocks, sometimes we have seen that, you know, some courses if it's priced too low people are not interested in it the same course if it's priced higher people are interested in it because they expect a certain quality out of education um, that's uh, pretty strange but that happens it does not happen always but it happens sometimes and finally there is something called as the hot hand fallacy now the hot hand fallacy is that if a price of something goes up immediately people might be buying it because they feel that the price of it might keep go even higher um, that generally is something that happens with stock markets a bit uh, but even with normal goods it happens uh, that when prices go up so for example with something like petroleum or diesel you know that you know they can go up even more so let me buy it now b before they become more costly now uh, all of these three factors can contribute to a good being a webland good uh, but mostly it is the snob effect that's the biggest driver of the webland uh, goods and at the complete other end of the spectrum, right at the bottom, are very inferior goods, which are called Giffen goods, uh, named after an economist Giffen, just like Veblen is named after an economist called Veblen. Um, so Giffen goods are uh, also something that do not follow the law of demand. And, uh, you know, if their prices increase, they are bought more. And if their prices decrease, then they are bought less. And that happens because of a very different uh, kind of a reason that happens because of the income effect. So what happens is that sometimes there are goods like, um, say, for example, uh, uh, air coolers which are water-based air coolers are considered to be a cheaper substitute for air conditioners now if people had more money they would buy an air conditioner but if they had less money they would be buying um, air coolers similarly say for example there are coarse grains coarse grains are like unrefined rice or unrefined wheat now those also are considered to be uh, like a poor man's grains so they are bought uh, only if people are not able to buy the refined ones uh, so they buy the coarse grains now if people had more money they would buy the you know costlier alternative they would not buy these goods so if a good is uh, you know being thought of as a very inferior good and if it does not have any other substitute at its current price range and its substitutes are at a higher price range then those goods uh, also start behaving in a different way is that if their prices decrease further people buy even less of it because they feel that it is even worse and if their prices increase a little more then their price comes near to the price of the costlier alternatives so people with higher income do not easily switch to the higher alternatives so as a result of that uh, with Giffen goods also the law of demand does not work other than Weblen and Giffen goods most other goods are called ordinary goods and that is uh, they follow the common law of demand that is you know you increase the price people are going to buy less of it you decrease the price people are uh, going to buy um, you know more of it and sometimes this sensitivity is really really high for example uh, very recently in india palaji biscuit uh, i think they increased the they, they figured out that if they increase the price by 10 paisa uh, then they would lose uh, so many customers that they would lose revenue so increasing uh, the price is not a good way for them to increase their revenue and uh, that's a very high very high negative elasticity in demand okay so if things have very high negative elasticity in demand then it's very difficult to increase their prices of them uh, generally if the elasticity of uh, demand is you know something like minus two or minus three in those cases uh, if you decrease their prices then you actually earn more revenue because uh, then more people are buying it uh, like 
much much more people are buying it and the total revenue that you're making is more and if you increase the price even a little bit then a lot less people buy it and you know you are actually making less net money in that case so this is something that's uh, very uh, important for anybody to understand for example when you're running a business like we do at coding blocks understanding whether uh, pricing our courses higher or lower will make them sell more or less uh, it's important to be able to run a business in that and sometimes people don't really understand these as formal uh, mathematical formulae but they just understand it because they run a business but it's always nice to have a uh, deeper insight into uh, some of these things so if you like this video and uh, you know if you found these insights useful uh, please share this video with your friends and they might be learning something useful as well and subscribe to our channel we uh, will continue to post about topics like this and if you want uh, to cover more such uh, price elasticity kind of topics write down a comment and we will uh, take up topics like that thank you